Here we are going to show the different categories of gas leaks that occur during laparoscopic and robotic surgery. We've used clear and optical imaging in an operating theatre to show the gas vortexes that occur around chokers and instruments during operations. The first category is leaks that result from intentional actions by the surgeon. One example is opening the tap at a trocar to vent gas to clear smoke from the internal operative field in the presence of a pneumoperitoneum. Another example is removal of ports without prior desufflation of the pneumoperitoneum. More mindful practice and filtered smoke evacuators address this category and these have been the predominant focus of recent guidance for surgery in the COVID-19 era. Leaks can also though occur inadvertently via the trocar incision, either because the wound has been made fractionally too big or stretches during the case due to instrument and trocar movements. The third category involves leakage inbuilt into trocar or instrument design. For instance, removal of obturators induced leakage as the trocar valves are open during this time. Here is an obturator being removed from a 5mm port which is needed for placement or replacement of trocars. Optical ports, of course, by their mechanism of action, induce a lot of gas flow during their placement. Gas can also leak during insertion and removal of instruments in, into and out of trocars. Robotic instrumentation leaks gas through the instruments themselves, as we show here in this simple and reproducible test. First, a glove is placed over the instrument head and tied in place. Next, a gentle positive pressure is applied to the instrument tip. After cessation of insufflation, you'll see gas leaks back through via the instrument tip. To see better where it's leaking from, here the instrument head is submerged in water and again a positive pressure is applied to the instrument tip. There are several areas of leakage, some of which are sites of attachment into the robot although these are not intended to be hermetic seals. It's clear so that leakage cannot be obviated by optimum current technique alone. One possible way to manage all the leaks occurring through out a case could be placing a barrier enclosure over the operative field, although this is not likely to be practical as it will dictate trocar placement and impair instrument movement. Another approach could be to place vacuum rings at the top and base of the trocars to manage whatever leakage occurs. Here we can see the effect of switching on the vacuum via a ring placed at the bottom of the trocar in managing an incisional gas leak. And here you can see that a gas leak occurring via disrupted valves on the trocar on the left is being intermittently managed by switching on and off a ring vacuum at the top of this trocar in comparison to the unmanaged similar leak from the trocar on the right. The Center of Disease Control in the US adopts a hierarchy of controls pyramid framework when considering exposures to occupational hazards. In this, engineering controls rank highly above administrative or personal protective controls and in the context of COVID-19 would rank in preference only below disease elimination via vaccination. Laparoscopic and robotic techniques need to build in better fixed methods of solving the issue of gas leaks during procedures.